Okay, so um, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? I put a lot of effort into my videos. I ask for nothing in return other than the fact that you subscribe and like my video. Also, if you get a chance to, I'm going to be publishing my Facebook page too that you can subscribe and like that as well. So let's move forward here. Again, I'm going to publish these files to the web so you can take a look at them later. Comments and suggestions are always welcome. Comment on my video. I apologize about my voice. I have a uh, spasticity, spasticity vocal cord problem. It's the same problem that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has. So unfortunately, there's no uh, cure for it, but there is treatment. The treatment is to inject my vocal cords with Botox, which I'm kind of totally against. So if you can bear with me, I'll take things one step at a time. If you have any questions, please, please, please comment and ask questions. I respond to my comments. I'm here to help you. So let's go to File, File, and Save As. Okay, so let's save this as version 4. Okay. Now, are we having fun? Okay. So let's stylize the rest of our content here. Okay. So let's stylize the rest of our div tags. So we have div tag tags, but we don't have rules. The only two rules we have for the page are the body tag rule and the wrapper rule. Okay. So nothing else. We have it rules for paragraphs and it rules for uh, H1 tags, H2 tags, et cetera, et cetera. We can do that. Okay, so let's move forward here. So branding tag. So let's select the tag down here to the bottom left. You know the drill by now. Select the tag, come over here to the property palette and make a rule. Now, important step here, okay? It's not necessary that when I write this rule that it says wrapper branding. It's implied that branding is inside of wrapper. But when it writes the rule over here to the right, I don't want it to say wrapper branding wrapper site nap, wrapper this, wrapper that. So based on these choices, I'm going to make this less specific. Now by default, notice what happened here. Dreamweaver picked compound. Compound simply means combination. It's good to go. You don't have to touch anything. We're going to hit less specific and we're going to hit OK. So branding tag, we're going to do a couple things with branding tag. We're going to go to the category of box. Again, CSS rule definition for Branding, pound symbol branding, which means it's an ID tag. Okay, so box section. Now, a very important step here. It's not necessary to change the width because it defaults to the width of the wrapper tag, which is the parent tag. Okay, so we're going to change the height. Let's change the height to say 150 pixels. Now, if you hit the apply option, you'll see that the branding tag is now in fact 150 pixels high. But I have a slight problem here. I don't want the content smashing up against the end of the branding tag. So how do I solve that? Well, based on these choices, these are my choices, we're gonna put in say 10 pixels of padding. Now, extremely important step as to what's happening right now. If I hit the apply option right now, this is no longer 150 pixels high because I put in 10 pixels of padding all the way around. This is now 150 pixels high, plus 10 on the top and 10 on the bottom. Okay, I don't want it to be 170 pixels. I want it to be 150 pixels. So what can I do to this number to get it back to 150 pixels? I can let Dreamweaver do the math for me. For those of you that may have slept through fourth math class, Dreamweaver will do the math for you by simply telling it what to do. So in this particular case, we're going to minus 20, which is 10 on the top, 10 on the bottom. There's nothing to minus the width because the width has no de has a default value. You can't minus nothing from nothing. Okay. So if I hit the apply option right now, there is my branding tag. That's a true 150 pixels high. It's 130 plus 10 on the top and 10 on the bottom. Okay. Now let's go to the category of background background category, and let's give this some kind of background. So we're just going to give this a orange background. Now let's think about something. If you give this an orange background, this black type is not looking too good against the orange background. So we're going to go to the category of type, and we're going to make our type for this particular branding tag be based on these choices. 
we're going to make it white. So we specify the type to be white, the background to be orange, and the box height to be 130 plus 10 in the top and 10 in the bottom, bottom, which is 150 if you apply option. Okay, hit OK. Make a change, save a change. Now, before we go further here, we're going to format the content inside the branding tag here. So this is going to be our headline. Headline or a logo or a catchphrase or a site name. So we're going to select this branding tag. Again, I don't have to do this. I'm just selecting the content. Okay. So I'm going to double click so this particular case. I am going to double click the content because there's no formatting here. So we're going to come down here. Actually, we don't have to do that. We're going to come down here to format and we're going to select H1. We're going to make this an H1 tag. We're just going to put, let's do that here. I'm just going to put my cursor right here. I don't have to do this. I just have to have my cursor there. We're going to come down here to formatting and we're going to select the H1 tag. Now, I don't want to fill your head with too much stuff here, but here's a little shortcut. In Macintosh, you use the command key. Windows, you use the control key. So I simply hit a command one through command six, Windows, control one through control six. Watch what I can do. So right now, if this is not formatting, command Z, it's not formatting, so watch. Rather than come down here to formatting, I'm gonna show you a simple, simple technique. In Macintosh, command one through command six, Windows, control one, you control six, so watch, command key one, command key two, look at the bottom here, now it's header two, command three, now it's header three, command four, now it's header four. So it's a good production technique, guys, you don't have to put your mouse in your hand every 10 seconds. So command one, we're gonna make that header one, okay? So we're gonna call this my site name, mysite.com. We're gonna hit the return key which automatically becomes a paragraph. We're gonna say, shop till you drop. Now, what I want to do here, similar to what we did in our very first video, this is an H1 tag. We wanna make this an H2 tag. How do I do that? I just click inside the content. I don't have to do this. I just put my cursor inside the content and command two or header two. Command two or header two. Shop to the drop, make a change, save a change, okay? Now, I wanna talk about at this time a very, very important tag, a tag we haven't used yet. One of the most valuable tags of the whole entire site It's called the wildcard tag or the universal tag or the asterisk tag. Now, this tag basically talks and sets the default of Every single HTML tag, the branding tag, the header tag, the, the uh, body tag, the P tag. So we're going to set the asterisk tag is going to set the default of every single tag because I'm not happy with this space here. I want to get rid of the space. Notice too that there's space in the top of this. And I don't want that space to be there. So we're going to correct that by inserting the universal tag or the asterisk tag. So how do I do this? Okay, I simply go to my CSS rule, new CSS rule. There's nothing to select. There's nothing to select. I hit click. Now, by default, this says compound. That's where you want to be. You want to be in compound. We're going to type in the asterisk tag, which is simply the shift A key, the asterisk. This creates the wildcard universal selector tag, also known as the asterisk tag. We're going to OK. Okay. Now, the only purpose of this tag, rule definition for asterisk, this tag talks to and sets the default on every single HTML tag in the program. So we're going to go to the box category, and we want to set the default padding to zero. We're going to set the default margin to zero. Okay. Now, why am I setting the padding and the margin? Because browsers, some browsers default to padding, some browsers default to margin. This takes care of both issues, padding, margin. Okay, so if I apply option, it gets rid of that extra space. 
and get rid of the space between these two tags. Also tighten up the space at the top of the wrapper tag. That's what the asterisk tag does. It sets the default in the entire site. Now the asterisk tag is the grandfather tag. So if you look over here to the right here, we're going to move that to the top. That's the grandfather tag of the entire site, followed by the body tag. Okay. So now I notice I don't have as much space here because I got rid of the space by setting up the asterisk tag. It set the default to the entire site. It also basically got rid of the space on top of the wrapper tag. Now, let's say as an example, I do want to have space on top of the wrapper tag. So how can I do that? Well, let's double click the wrapper tag. Double click the wrapper tag or I can click the pencil icon either way. So double click wrapper. Category, category, wrapper, box, box category. From the top, we want to drop this down a half inch. Now, I said before, there's 72 pixels to an inch. So again, let's say you slept through fourth grade math class and you're not very good at this whole math thing, but you know that 72 pixels are in an inch. So let's start out with 72 pixels. 72, watch this. I want to make it half 72 which is 36, but again, I'm not good at math, and I don't know that. So I can simply say 72 divided by 2. 72 divided by 2, if I apply that, that's a half inch. Therefore, I have a half inch margin space, because margin space is outside of the box. Padding would have been inside the box. I don't want to do the distance between my site and the top of the box. Let's say I don't want to do, let's say I want to do a quarter inch. I could say 72 divided by a quarter divided by a quarter, which is 18 pixels, and that's what we want to have. So make a change, save a change. So just get very comfortable with the fact that we can do math right inside our dialog box. That's basically an across-the-board Adobe thing, by the way, guys. It's an Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, uh, InDesign. You can do math inside the dialog box. Okay, so let's start finalizing and setting up the rest of these div tags in our next video.